Ladies and gentlemen, we are so back, baby. There has been a lot of speculation concerning the performance targets of RDNA 4 as well as the pricing. But a very fascinating interview has popped up from AMD's Frank Azer. And they are essentially stating that many of the performance leaks of RDNA 4 are actually underselling what this card is capable of. So we're going to be discussing that along with some updates to pricing as well as some specifications. So let's begin with Frank Azer, shall we? He was recently speaking to PC World. And of course it is an interview and it is his job to sell and build excitement for the next generation GPUs, but I do think the wording here is quite telling. So PC World, of course I'll leave a link to this in the video description, asked Frank what, you know, if they can share any details at all about the performance targets. And he said, what I'll tell you is that any performance you've seen prior to CES has not been accurate. Those rumored leaks out there are not accurate. He was then asked, well, <laughs> does that mean it's better or worse because just to say something isn't accurate it's like i could say to you well you know the performance for this card is 50 frames a second and then you say well that's not accurate and the actual performance is 25 frames a second right but he adds um you're gonna get better performance than most of the leaks out there i've seen if not all of them you will get much better performance out of the card how much better i'm not going to tell you now there are some very interesting nuggets from those statements the first nugget he sees states that a lot of the leaks prior to ces were not accurate now of course i'd covered rumors previously that a lot of the drivers that were given to aibs um, and these were some of the earlier rooms that had popped up to chip hell basically the drivers that were given to aibs were nerfing the performance of the card then at ces IGN managed to test Call of Duty, albeit with no frame, um, sorry, upscaling and no frame generation, and it put the card roughly at the same perf performance as an RTX 4080 Super. Now, there are a lot of caveats here. For one, we don't 100% know the model of the card that was being tested. For example, is it a 9070 or an XT? IGN initially claimed it was a non-XT model, but again, they're getting that information from people who are at the booth, did they get told misinformation? It's it's very hard to 100% know. But let's assume, for the sake of this, that it was an XT model. Fast forward a day later, and we had some benchmarks that leaked uh, from 3D Mark. And again, one of those benchmarks uh, put the 9070 XT, the 330 watt model, roughly on par, again, with an RTX 4080 Super. However, as I covered in that video a couple of days ago, the person who leaked the scores was allegedly told by someone else, uh, I got news for you. The driver that you guys were testing this on, um, it's kind of out of date, and the newer drivers actually improve performance even more. Now Frank is saying that, well, a lot of the leaks are just simply inaccurate. However, he does caveat that by saying that he has seen, obviously he may have missed one of these rumors, who knows, but he also says much better performance. Now, I'm very curious as to what you think the word much better performance, because let's just use frames per second and say that something's getting 100 frames a second, and, so, and then I release a new driver or something like that, and it's like 102. That to me isn't much better. It's, I would say that's marginal improvement. 105 is an okay uplift. 110, that's why I'm going to say to you that that is a tangible uplift. And you might be able to say 10% is much better. So yeah, I'm curious. I, I'm very interested to hear what you guys think about that. What would you consider to be much better? Again, he is obviously trying to sell hype and excitement for the card. So I'll leave that for you guys to <laughs> the peek down below. I'm trying to still remain somewhat optimistic. I don't expect this card to suddenly be like, you know, RTX 1590 levels of performance. It's just not realistic, but perhaps in certain tests, it will perform decently. It's perhaps going to have less variance on a test-to-test -test basis. I'll be very interested to see how this card actually performs because courtesy of a retailer, we also have some updates um, giving further clarification to the specifications of the GPU and also the price as well. So um, this information, I just want to give credit to uh, videocards.com and they have managed to spot a listing at the Philippines and this is from a website known as Net Codex who again are a retailer. Starting with the uh, specifications 
Although there's nothing particularly new here because we've also seen GPU Z screenshots again in a video I covered a couple of days ago. You can see that we're looking at again a process node of 4NM. Clock frequency is just under 3 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 bit bus. The bandwidth is 624 gigabytes per second, and of course, 4096 shady units. The L3 cache is allegedly 64 megabytes. Um, so it's nice we have some clarification there and 64 RT cores. Now, this is where things get kind of tasty. The pricing here um, is listed at 600 US dollars if you do a currency conversion. However, that is allegedly with a 12% tax or VAT, whatever you want to say. So assuming that this is not a placeholder pricing or using the previous leak from a couple of days ago as a guide for the price, it would actually match up with that previous leak, which I think is quite interesting. Now, obviously at the end of the day, I've said a hundred times at this point, guys, when it comes to price, I am a lot more skeptical with price prior to announcements than what I am actually performance targets and benchmarks and specifications because prices tend to be the thing that is chosen quite late. With that said, if these cards, and this is the custom variants allegedly, which are more expensive around the 550 mark, and then of course under 400 US dollars is allegedly the reference cards, which essentially run at lower clock frequencies and have a lower TDP. So if this is true, and it does, roughly speaking, fall into the you know performance tiers that we've just spoke about as nauseum at this point, I would say that these cards are going to sell extremely well. At the end of the day, we'll have to wait and see, of course, until re until reviewers actually get hold of them, to see what the you know FSR, DLSS for all of this stuff actually handles, it, like in real life. Because at the end of the day, we've only seen very limited tests and a couple of you know videos here and there. And it doesn't really give you such a great insight into like multiple games, multiple different resolutions, the scaling across multiple different scenarios. It's going to be very interesting. I will also be extremely curious to see if these rumors are true, whether AMD can make some actually good, meaningful gains in the uh, <laughs> in the GPU market. Oh, and guys, uh, before I close out, one last thing. Uh, I would highly suggest you guys check out yesterday's video. I kind of named it crappy, to be honest, but it's very interesting because NVIDIA have now pretty much confirmed that they want to get into the desktop and laptop market for processors. Now, naturally, this will be arm related and it's going to be having some pretty significant impacts in the future, potentially anyway, of PC gaming, because not only that, Microsoft are working on some big updates to Windows. And this is somewhat in direct response to what's happening in the handheld market, obviously. Well, let's just say Valve's handhelds are becoming pretty popular and the Steam OS. So there's a lot of major changes underway for PC gaming but also Xbox as well. So do check out that video. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.